It's Twitter Tuesday on the Locked On Giants podcast. Your questions coming up next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On podcast family, your team every day. I'm Patricia Trena, and today's episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is presented by po- Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times the amount of your money on your entry. First-time users receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. And on today's Locked On Giants podcast, we have a Twitter Tuesday. That's right. That means we're answering your questions here on the show. Got about, I want to say a dozen or so questions. So we're going to jump right in and get to... Uh, the ones that came in. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. Um, we're going to kick things off with a Twitter question from James A, who asks, are the sacks that Daniel Jones took due to his taking too long to process the offense, the offensive line or both? Can this be fixed? Um, and then he also asks, I felt that Jones was running way too much against the Panthers. He's sliding, but only a matter of time before he forgets and takes a big hit. You were great. All right, two questions there. James, um, at times, yes, it looks like Daniel Jones is holding the ball a little too longer, but he's gotten a little bit better at that. Um, you know, there, there are times when, yes, it looks like he's holding on to it, but uh, certainly not like it, he was in the past, in my opinion. Um, the offensive line, um, there are times, there were times, I should say, in the Carolina game where I thought Daniel Jones probably could have slid around in the pocket a little bit more to avoid some of the pressures he got. But uh, yeah, the pass blocking just hasn't been very sharp just yet. So that is part of the, um, the, the, the process. Daniel's been at his best when he's been able to get the ball out of his hand quickly. Now, as for your comment about running way too much, it's no secret, James, I am not a fan of running quarterbacks. I do not like to see a quarterback run for the very reason you mentioned. Now, yes, a quarterback that's a statue can get hit and hurt in the pocket. Totally get that. But um, you're absolutely right. I I get a little nervous uh, when Daniel takes off with the ball in his hands. He's been better with sliding feet first, but I just have this, this fear that um, somebody's going to come flying in and, and clock him in the head. Now, that said, you know, his feet are an asset and, you, you know, you can't coach scared and you can't play scared. I get that. But you've got running backs to do the running for you. So I don't know. To me, I don't know that I'd want to see Daniel running all that often, but I understand where the Giants are coming from on that. So can't really kill him for that. Because again, you can't coach your play scared, but yeah, I am concerned that uh, he's going to take a, a, a shot to the head or to the neck area and miss time. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but you know, it's the game, it's violent. So, okay. Um, Tim, Tim McElroy asks, can the Giants try to extend Andrew Thomas now rather than wait until the season is over? No, Tim, they got to wait until he's in three years. That's the rule. So after this year, they can look to extend him, I believe. Um, this year, uh, in season, I, I don't think he's eligible, so no. All right, next question from Tony Thomas. Last year, we beat Carolina 25-3. This year, we won by three points after two fumbles in their own territory and 250-plus yarders by Gano. Which team has improved the most? All right, Tony, I'm not sure if you mean by which team. Do you mean the Giants or the Panthers or do you mean the 2021 Giants versus the 2022 Giants? I'm assuming you mean the, the two Giants uh, teams. And I would say the 2022 Giants have improved 
So um, if that was your question, that would be my answer. If you're asking me which of the Giants and Panthers has improved the most, I would say that probably Carolina has a little bit better personnel. But at the end of the day, who won the game, Tony? So, you know, doesn't matter sometimes. Uh, the Giants won the game. So, uh, all right. Robert Giovanni Z. Uh, what must the G-men do better to utilize the running back portfolio? Um, well, Robert, it starts with run blocking, obviously. Um, the run blocking against Carolina wasn't quite as good as it was against Tennessee. Now, Carolina does have a very good defense, so let's um, let's not take anything away from them. Um, the Titans had a good run defense too, but the Giants just were able to, to get more runs to the outside, which I don't think they, they did as many runs to the outside against Carolina for some reason. Um, regarding your, your, your statement about giving Brita and Brightwell more carries, you know, that's, that's a delicate balance because I think there are some running backs that just need to get into a rhythm. And if you start rotating guys where, you know, you give Saquon a series, then Brita the next series, then Brightwell the next series, sometimes you can't get that running game in sync and into a groove. So I think it's a matter of the hot hand. I think it's also a matter of the game plan. Um, Barkley is healthy. I understand your concern that, you know, overuse might wear him down. But look, if he trained as hard as he said he did, and I have no reason to believe he didn't, he should be able to hold up, assuming he doesn't take any unfortunate hits. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you for the question. All right, Giant fans, we have um, the next question from Independent Outsider. I was very encouraged by the play of rookies Flott and Belton. What did you notice and what do you need, see, need for them to work on? Okay, Outsider, we're actually going to have something on Giants Country about that. Um, I'm halfway through the film, so I can't give you an answer on this Monday night as I record this just yet, but something will be up on Giants Country um, at some point on Tuesday, which will cover that. So make sure you check that out um, when it posts. All right. Um, and then let's see, we've got J.R. Henny Skywalker. Dave's played his starters throughout the preseason. Prior coaches did not. Is this team primed and conditioned better than most Giants team over the last decade because of that? Um, the conditioning does look to be better. I think the reason why Dable played his starters more this preseason was because it was a new system and they needed the work. But yes, I do think the approach that they have taken so far to conditioning has left the team in a better kind of uh, state, if you will. Um, can I compare it to past teams? Yeah, I guess you could say that it's better. I mean, last year I thought the Giants would get gassed early on in the, you know, like in the fourth quarter of games in the early part of the season. So yeah, I guess you could say, um, I, I guess your, your statement and your observation is spot on. So good eye. All right, Giant fans, we've got more Twitter Tuesday coming up right after this. Hey, Giant fans, planning your fantasy sports or betting action for 2022 and beyond has never been easier when you use prize picks. You can win up to 10 times the amount of your money on any entry, and there's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available for any of the major sporting leagues. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. And Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states in Canada and offers safe and fast withdrawals. Download the Prize Picks app today or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. Don't forget that promo code. It's locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm Patricia Trainer, your host, and uh, let's continue with Twitter Tuesday. Matt Lennon asks, Slayton, Gall Slayton Galladay and Tony are better than Sills and James. What is going on with the wide receiver core? Matt, 
Um, Coach Dable has explained this a couple of times now. I, I know I've covered it as well. If you don't show that you have earned practice um, snaps in uh, practice, you're not going to play. It's a very competitive room. So if you don't get out there and show that you, A, know the playbook, B, can execute it, you're not playing. Dable doesn't care about draft status or contract. He said so again on Monday. Richie James and David Sills both know that playbook like the back of their hand. I know that for a fact, okay? Galladay and Tony and Slayton, they work at it. They know that their share of the playbook, but executing. You know, if Tony's always hurt and can't practice, how's he supposed to execute? Slayton, you know, you, you kind of get the impression that they're they're phasing him out. And I question, by the way, um, if Slayton and Galladay are what the Giants really want in this offense. They seem to favor the smaller, quicker guys that can pick up yards after the catch. So there might be something there to it as well. But listen, you know, Sills and James, you know, I understand what you're saying, but don't discount them. Discount them because sometimes if you work your tail off, you could be just as good as, you know, as what the team needs. And they're proving that they are so far. All right, next question comes from Justin at Spider733. Does Daniel Jones ever look to his right? I'm not trying to be funny. A friend pointed it out, and I think he's right. Well, Justin, I, I checked um, Next Gen stats. I also checked his passing uh, charts. He throw, he's thrown to the right. So I'm not sure. You know, I think I need a little bit more information because I think there's a little bit more to your question. Um, but yeah, Jones hasn't exclusively just thrown to the middle and to the left. He has thrown to the right side. So I think there's probably more to your question, what that is, you know, just shoot me an email or, or follow up with another tweet with more information. But, um, but yeah, Jones has thrown to the right. I, I looked it up on, on next gen stats and, and the passing charts. So, all right, Justin with another one, is it me or is Daniel Jones locking in on one receiver again? Not all the time, Justin. I mean, yes, I've seen it happen a couple of times uh, here and there, but I don't know that he's he's necessarily doing it every throw. There's been some throws that he's made, actually, where he's looked off defenders or misled defenders with his eyes. So, again, it's a, Daniel Jones is a work in progress. you got to remember, this is a brand-new offense for him. It's not like any other offense he's run. So he's starting to get... Um, more comfortable in it. Um, you know, are there some bad habits that creep into his game? Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. But um, I I think, you know, and, and unless the information I'm getting is incorrect, that Daniel Jones is, is headed in the right direction. Now, is he headed in the right direction fast enough? Is he, has he done enough to show that he should be the quarterback of this team in the future? I'm not ready to say that yet, but I have seen um, improvement in him. And we've seen that also uh, over in Inside Football, in which we break down all the players, you know, performances after every game. So there is progress being made, but yes, he does occasionally revert back to some bad, um, some bad habits of the past. All right. Um, Ted Tompkins, do we see KT? Or and or AO Monday night. Um, Ted, right now as I record this, it's Monday night. So I haven't seen an injury report. Um, I'm probably a little bit more optimistic that Thibodeau is back Monday night as opposed to Ojolari. Uh, that said, got to see what how they practice. Got to see, you know, are they limited? You know, um, what are they able to do? So right now on Monday night, I feel Thibodeau has a better chance of being back than Ojulari. But again, that could change. So hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully they're both back. I'd love to see them both back. But um, it's always been my impression that that Thibodeau is a little further along in his recovery than, than Ojulari. But We'll see what they are able to do in practice this week. 
Okay. Alan B uh, has a question about, um, let's see. Those of us who couldn't understand how the Giants could cut Martinez just prior to the season open and were schooled on Sunday, the way they utilized three, four safety sets against Carolina was astonishing. Um, we're going to see the emergence of X-Man, Love, and Belton as the strength of our defense and wait till we get uh, Kayvon and Aziz to this group. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Get a healthy defense, you know, and, that, and also, you know, include Leonard Williams. In that group, Leonard may have to miss some time with that sprained MCL that he suffered. Um, you know, get this defense healthy. And uh, if you've been impressed with what you've seen so far, all I could say is you ain't seen nothing yet. So, so absolutely. Thanks for that question, Alan. Okay, um, we have a few here from Sean. Let's take this first one here. I read a quote from Sterling Shepard admitting that he and the other wide receivers need to get better about running the correct routes. When I think of if when thinking of evaluating player progress this year, at what point should we reasonably expect everyone to be comfortable with the offense? Um, probably about four or five weeks in, you know, David Turner and I have, have done shows on, you know, the day after a game. And David's been saying this now for weeks, every week he's been on the show. You got to give this offense about four to five weeks for it to really gel. So patience, we're two weeks in. Um, things are going to get better and better. And hopefully when it all comes together, it's going to look spectacular. All right, Giant fans, we have some more questions coming up right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Giant fans, did you know Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace? With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom. Many Turo hosts can deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. So don't wait anymore. Ditch your boring car rentals and find your drive at Turo.com. That's T-U-R-O. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to Twitter Tuesday here on the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm Patricia Trana. We're continuing to answer your questions. We've got one more from Sean who asks about O'Shane Zimenez. Do you think it's purely a matter of scheme fit or have there been parts of his scheme that have suddenly developed from your perspective? And by the way, we also had another question about Zimenez. So um, kind of along the same lines as what Sean asked here. Um, Sean, Zimenez um, making the roster over Quincy Roche. Zimenez is a little bit more athletic, which is kind of a better fit for what this defense looks for in its linebackers. Um, Zimenez also, you know, it's interesting. I, I, after the game on Sunday, I, uh, went up to him in the locker room and I gave him an apology. I said to him, look, dude, I, I honestly didn't think you were going to make the roster, you know, after the coaches last year banished you to the inactive list. And he was gracious about it. He, he, he was cool about it. But I also asked him, I said, what did you do differently to train? to get yourself ready for this year? Did, you know, what did you, did you study with somebody? What, what did you do? And he told me that he was down in Atlanta and he did most of his training alongside of Aziz Ojulari, but also down there training with them was one Jihad Ward, who is familiar with Wink Martindale's system. So Jihad Ward sort of served as a teacher, if you will, or a mentor. And I think that may have had something to do with it. Um, Zimenez told me that, you know, in the past, he would work out by himself. He wouldn't train with a teammate. And he feels like that made a huge difference for him. And Jihad Ward, just as a PS, you know, his locker is next to Zimenez's in, at MetLife Stadium. And he was very, very um, enthusiastic, almost like a proud big brother saying how proud he was of, of Zimenez. They call him Zimenez Ox, by the way. How proud he was of Ox and uh, how he was going to stay on his butt. So um, I thought that was kind of funny. Well, not funny, funny, but adorable funny. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably um, a big difference for Zimenez. We'll see if he keeps it up, but he has played well. Um, he's made tremendous strides and, you know, he's got 
Jihad Ward, aka Hadi, H A D I, they call him. Uh, that's his nickname, Hadi. Uh, so he's had him in his ear. And Jihad Ward, um, I I'll say this about him. He, I spoke with him last week and he, and he interestingly said, you know, I'm not a leader. But I'll tell you what, for somebody who doesn't consider his, himself a leader, he sure has taken it upon himself to make sure that all these young pups know this system, have it down pat, know how to take care of themselves and, and do all the little things that they need to be great. So if that's not a leader, then I don't know what it is. So just a little FYI from the locker room I, th I thought I'd show, uh, share with you. Um, all right. Uh, next question comes from... Uh, I think this is Andrew. Yeah, this is from Andrew. Um, for newly signed practice squad and free agents that come in midseason, how do the players find accommodations so quickly? Um, Andrew, the team puts them up in a hotel, and I think they're allowed to stay in a hotel for a certain number of days. Also, um, and, and by the way, if they stay at a hotel, the team does cover that. But also, I don't know if the Giants still do this. I know they did way back in the day, but they used to have partnerships with local community, like condominiums and, and co-ops and stuff like that, where if players needed housing, they could go to, like, say, a, a co-op manager and say, hey, we got a player who needs housing. Can you set them up? Sometimes players who own housing in the area, but who, you know, sign elsewhere or move on via free agency or whatever, sometimes they'll rent out their or sublet their apartment to, um, to the players that come in. So there's any number of ways that they can find accommodations for these players. But yes, for the most part, um, when a guy comes in, they do, uh, usually they stay at a hotel. They have so many days. I'm not sure how many it is exactly, but the team will help them out. And then it's just a matter of, you know, them setting the team referring guys to the various co-ops in like Hoboken, West New York, New Jersey, um, Lindhurst, you know, the area around um, MetLife Stadium so that these guys can get in and out of the stadium on time. So hope that answers your question. All right. And then um, I think we have one more from Andrew. Okay. One more from Andrew. What's the difference between the regular game ball and the kicking ball? Um, the kicking ball is exclusively used for kicking. Um, according to what I found online, when I did a Google search, the kicking ball is actually opened about two hours and 15 minutes by the referee. It's a brand new ball. They're shipped in via the pack, you know, in their packaging, their original factory packaging. And the referee opens them up. And those balls are kept aside and used only for kicking. Whereas the game balls that you see, they're rotated in and out. So a lot of times you might see, you know, a guy on the sideline will toss a referee a new ball. That ball may be used. You know, it might have been used earlier in the game. The kicking ball is brand new. Now, I don't remember if they designate the kicking ball with the K they, like they used to. That I'm not sure on. But, uh, you know, in the past they used to have something like 12 kicking balls and they would number them one through 12 and they would go through them. And then if they got to number 12, they would go back to number one. But I think that changed. So that's, that's the big, the biggest difference um, between the regular ball and the kicking ball. All right. We've got one more question on this Twitter Tuesday. Greg Pear is a big fan of Nick Gates, as am I. Uh, love his nastiness. Any possibility that he plays this year? You know what, Greg? Never say never. I had a chance to speak with Nick, who, you know, as nasty as he is on the field, gosh, is he super nice off the field. He's just an absolute delight and a guy that you, you, you just can't help but root for. And Nick is working his tail off. I can tell you that for a fact. He is optimistic about his chances of returning. He is doing everything they have asked him to do. Could he return this year? You know what? If he does, it wouldn't surprise me. I think it's a long shot. But as I have learned from the Richie Seibert story way back when, you don't count somebody out who has heart, 
who has desire, who has the want to. And just like Richie had it back in the day, Nick's got it now. And I'm not counting that guy out. I think if he is able to come back, he can be like one of the first guards off the bench. He can also be maybe a jumbo tight end. So I think they could find a role for him very easily if he does come back. And I am hoping he does because as you said, he's, he's just, you know, he's the guy you want to have on the field. He is an enforcer. And, uh, I just have mad respect for Nick Gates. I really hope he makes it back. So thanks for that question. That's a great way uh, to, to wrap up the questions. All right, Giant fans, that does, in fact, wrap up all the Twitter questions that we have for this week. If I didn't get to a question that you sent in, chances are it was already covered. Or if it wasn't tagged, I didn't see it. So make sure you're tagging those Twitter questions. Ask P Train. So I see it. Um, if I didn't get to your question, or if you have another question, send it to me in the mailbag and I'll pick it up on Giants Country over the weekend. All right. So on that note, Giant fans, um, we're going to call it a show. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. I'm hoping to have a special guest on tomorrow. Um, well, I won't know actually until Tuesday if I'll have that person, but I'm working on a special guest for you. Um, on Thursday, it's the crossover show with the Dallas Cowboys Locked On uh, Cowboys host. I think I've got um, Marcus Mosier is going to be with me uh, as opposed to Landon McCool. So I think it's Marcus Mosier. And then Friday, um, hoping to go live with the entertainer. And then on Monday, we'll have a an extra show because it's Monday Night Football. So we won't have anything to talk about really game-wise until Tuesday. So uh, plenty to come up. Still on the Locked on Giants podcast. Hope you'll tune in. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day or watching on YouTube, your first watch of the day. I'm Patricia Trana. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Giants fans.